Hello, I'm Wendell Honeycutt, and this is a presentation on the use of research in the trials and execution during Tudor and Stuart England. Uh, I teach history here at UTA, and uh, my specialty is in English history and uh, on also legal punishment. And uh, what I observe in all of this is that people, students in general, have a very simplistic, rudimentary idea about the nature of these trials. Uh, they have sort of a cartoonish uh, Alice in Wonderland sort of approach to things off with their head, uh, that that monarchs did whatever they pleased whenever they wanted, and that uh, trials lacked no, uh, no solid legal footing whatsoever, uh, very informed by uh, either Monty Python or even, as some students tell me, the uh, HBO series, The in any case, uh, I needed them to have a deeper understanding, and I found that simply telling them about it, uh, trying to get the method across that way, was only partially successful. It didn't really change their uh, understanding, their true depth of things. It's, uh, I wanted to use technology to get them involved, to get them uh, hands-on, and get them uh, an understanding of, of uh, that these trials had greater uh, depth than they had realized. So in my current uh, Tudor Stewart class that began in January, I uh, assigned a semester-long project that requires the students to access uh, trial transcripts. They're using the UTA uh, library primarily as their access in that sense. Uh, they're using these online documents of court proceedings, uh, the trials, the charges, and sometimes the descriptions of the executions. They work in groups. Each group assigned a high-profile case of an individual, um, and they uh, will eventually then create a collaborative presentation, again, using technology uh, that explores what they found about the, the charges, the trial itself, the legal process, and and of course the execution. In order to <clears throat> know if they have made progress, I made a pre-project pre assessment of their understanding so we could have some uh, clear notion of their growth and development. I asked them uh, six questions about uh, one about the trial in Tudor times. What's your first impression just when you hear of this? Overwhelmingly the response was execution and specifically beheading. Uh, others showed up as well, whipping, some corporal punishment, uh, the church, surprisingly. Also, asked them about um, the legal footing of these, of these trials. Were they of a sound legal process? Were they perfunctory? Uh, and they, again, think that they are without sound legal basis. Uh, many used words of unfair, abuse, uh, things like that in their, in their response. And seeing, again, a, a flat, um, one-dimensional response. In terms of asking the specific rules and procedures, did these exist? Did they follow them? Uh, they were agreed that they weren't following rules. Uh, they disagreed. Uh, whether the rules even existed. Some say the rules existed, they just weren't followed. Others say that there weren't any rules. So uh, they, they ultimately agreed on the ad hoc nature of uh, the trials. Interestingly, asking about a fair trial, was the trial fair, and how did that compare to today's trials, uh, they pretty much agreed that they weren't fair. They, dis, they, they agreed that uh, not fair meant uh, wrongful conviction. I didn't guide them in this. Uh, that's just how they interpreted it. In other words, nobody took the uh, other side of that uh, thinking about wrongful acquittal, letting the guilty go free. Uh, nobody considered that. Nobody considered that in today's trials. Were they unfair? Uh, so interesting interpretation. Uh, they also seem to think that today's trials weren't fair, but not for the same reasons. Was conviction inevitable? Was conviction more likely then than now? Uh, again, they think that conviction 
is almost inevitable that basically to be charged and brought to trial was to be convicted, uh, thinking that the trials were just for show. Um, they think that today's trials are less likely to convict, but yet they don't seem to think that they're fair. Again, no student uh, expresses concern about uh, guilty people going unpunished when they make that connection. The last question I asked them was about the sentences or the, the kinds of sentences that people received um, automatic. Uh, did there, was there a range of sentences or was there basically just you know, a single thing? Uh, they seem to think that execution was was always the outcome of a guilty uh, a guilty sentence, a guilty uh, decision, uh, specifically execution and beheading. Um, a f nobody mentioned hanging, which actually numerically is the most common form of execution at the time. Uh, nobody even thought of that. Um, a few mentioned whipping or some other corporal punishment forms. Um, a couple mentioned jail, but that was not the typical case. Nobody mentioned fines, which actually was, again, a very high numeric uh, outcome of trials. Nobody went there. One of the things that the, all the students have to do, in addition to their group project, individually they have to uh, write an essay about uh, the execution, trial and execution of Charles. They have to, in this essay, compare uh, the uh, circumstances of King Charles's trial and execution with that of their uh, group uh, subject. In doing this essay, uh, in grading this, I see that they have really come a long way since January. Uh, the essays were early April, so they, in this uh, essentially two-month period, they have uh, really developed. They they show a keener, deeper understanding of the subtleties that go into making up these trials and uh, an appreciation that it's, it's more complex, it's not uh, quite so automatic as they had imagined it to be. Uh, in terms of their actual group projects, um, they're due in another couple of weeks and uh, so only one group has actually already turned it in, which is surprising. But I can see the group work that they're doing and the questions that they ask, and all of this adds up to showing me that they are uh, developing a, a keener understanding. They, they clearly are getting it. Um, this is working. Uh, so this is this is satisfying to see uh, this group. They they've got um, what I had hoped they would get out of it. Um, in terms of the technology that we used in class, uh, them and um, they used a, uh, the, certainly the UGA's library databases extensively. Of course, we all use Blackboard. Um, in terms of producing their uh, presentation, uh, PowerPoint will probably be the main thing, but also uh, some Prezi's. Uh, but I encourage them to explore other things, just not anything where we have to buy software. Some students are using GroupMe to communicate among their groups. Uh, I used, of course, uh, PowerPoint. Um, I acquired Camtasia to use uh, to do recordings, nice voiceover PowerPoints like this one. Um, also acquired uh, Brevi as a text uh, completion software, making my ability to give feedback uh, far more efficient and nice. I appreciate your time and I look forward to the finished projects.